Hi, today I'm going to be showing you how to use the principle of moments to solve equilibrium problems. So, let's have a look at an example. Here we've got a gymnast standing on a beam. They weigh 600 newtons and they're 0.8 metres from the left hand side of the beam. We also know the beam's 4 metres long and it weighs 500 newtons. In order to balance the downward forces from the weight of the beam and the gymnast, we know that the supports either side of the beam must be supplying a force upwards because the system's in equilibrium. So, how do we work out what S1 and S2 are? Well, we need to use the principle of moments because that will eliminate one of the forces uh, and allow us to work out the other one. We can't do that any other way uh, because we've got two unknown forces and two unknowns, you're not going to be able to solve it. So what we do is we take uh, moments about the left-hand support first, so this one, and we work out uh, the moments from there, and we know because this system's in equilibrium, the total moment's going to be zero, so the clockwise and anti-clockwise moments must be balanced. So clockwise moments are from the weight of the gymnast and the weight of the beam. So let's add, work those out and add them together. So We've got 600 newton force, that's 0.8 metres from where um, the uh, pivot that we've chosen is. We've then got to add uh, the moment from the weight of the beam, which is 500, times 2. We know it's 2 metres from that support because it's a uniform beam. You always assume the weight's in the centre. We then know that that is going to be equal to the anticlockwise moment, which is provided by S1. So that's going to be 4 metres times S1. Okay, so 600 times 0 0.8 is 480, so it'll be 480 plus 500 times 2, which is 1000, and that's going to be equal to 4 lots of S1. So 1480 is equal to 4 lots of S1, that makes S1 equal to 1480 divided by 4, which is 300 and 70 newtons. Now we know what one of the support forces is, we only have one unknown left, which is the other support force. So we can just use the fact that the resultant force must be zero uh, to work out S2. So our downwards forces are 600 newtons plus 500 newtons. Our upwards forces are S1 and S2. We've already worked out that S1 is 370, so the only thing we don't know is S2. So we'll have 1100 on this side is equal to 370 plus S2. That means that S2 must be equal to 1100 minus 370, which is equal to 730 newtons. Job done. Here's an example of something you might see on an exam. So they'll give you a diagram and they'll give you various forces on there and various distances. And they will ask you to work out one of the unknowns. Usually there's two and you have to use the principle of moments to work out the one and then they'll ask you to work out the other. So it's exactly the same method as we've used before. We're going to take moments about Q. So that's moments about here. Um, and on this one, there's only one anti-clockwise moment and one clockwise moment. So that makes life a little bit easier than the last question. Um, so our anti-clockwise moment is provided by the weight of the trolley. Uh, and that's half a metre from Q. So our um, anti-clockwise moment is 160 newtons times 0.5. And that's going to be equal to um, the force P times the distance from between P and Q, which is 0 0.9 metres. So, that's 80 newton metres are going to be equal to P times 0 0.9. So P will end up being 80 divided by 0 0.9, which turns out to be 89 newtons. I'm giving that to two significant figures because everything in the question has been given to two significant figures. Finally, they want us to work out Q, so now we know P, we can just use the fact that the resultant force will be zero. So our upward forces are P, which is 89 newtons, plus Q, and our downward force is the weight, which is 160 newtons, 
So Q is going to be 160 minus 89, which is 71 newtons. Done.